Bing, bing, boom. It's mind pump time. Welcome to the best fitness channel on YouTube. The best because we're entertaining, we're fun, and we know more stuff than everybody else. This has actually been proven in studies, by the way. Mind pump knows more stuff than everybody else. All right, what's today's giveaway? All right, here's what we're going to give away. The program that everybody always talks about, the foundational workout program, MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can win free access to MAPS Anabolic. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things, and if we like your comment and we pick you, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to MAPS Anabolic. One more thing. Two workout programs are on sale right now, 50% off. MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension, both 50% off. Go check them out or just go sign up at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50 for that discount. All right, enjoy the show. I had this trainer. Um, oh, my God, I'm gonna. It, it, his name's going to slip, which is probably good. You always call me out. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, who can I throw to the Give bus today? Last night. When, I was yeah. at, when I was at Capitol and he was uh, – he was a part-time stripper, part-time trainer, one of my top sales guys. I know who this is. No, you don't. I, yes, no, I do. No way. Do See the one with three nipples and a ring? No, 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 no. Yeah. He was... Uh, <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> I mean, I remember that guy. <laughs> who, is, who is that guy? I don't remember that guy. You don't remember that guy? Welcome uh, to the stage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was in the same one with the sun on his Well, no. What made me think about it is his... when Sal right now was you know, <coughs> talking about intercostals and his, his, all his anatomy going on over here. And I used to listen to, I mean, my trainers, like at the Kappa McKee, do you remember Kappa McKee? The sales area had all those walls like yeah. in the little pit area. Yeah, the partitions. So yeah, the little partitions. So I could sit on the other side and I could listen to my trainer's presentation and not look like I'm listening. I'd be sit in my chair behind mm -hmm. the, right behind the wall and I could like, okay, what do they say? And then afterwards I would coach them like, hey, you know where you went this direction? Like yeah. you better go this you direction. You shouldn't have told him you were a stripper. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. but this guy was like notorious for making up like body parts and anatomy and stuff like that. No, like, he didn't. Yes, dude. He was such a hustler and a great closer that I would obviously let him get away with it while he's doing it. Then I'd sit him down and be like, bro, you can't just oh, make up terms. Dude, what like was that. it? Come on. Do you remember any of them? I'm, like, oh, I'm God. Oh, no. I would, no, they were bad. Bro, yeah. it was bad. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. He would just... Uh, and I and I knew what he was trying to communicate, so I, I guess I had some empathy. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't. I don't. I don't think he was like intentionally, like trying to just lie to these people. It's that he yeah. just didn't. He didn't have the words. Yeah. But he and he, what he was trying to communicate. Yeah. I got what he was trying to do. But he would just make shit up. When you're dude. gripping that that pterodactyl, really flares. Yeah, up. dude. Yeah. I don't know how he got away with it. I mean, I yeah. guess you know, you train enough people that your lower back hurts because you have an anterior posterior wink, and yeah. we need to train your bonchils. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Well, it would be like that, but not that bad. Like, he wouldn't yeah. say bunch and stuff like that, but it would be stuff like that. He would take like stuff that he maybe he heard in my presentation or another trainer's, and then he would make it his own, yeah. you know, and then you'd hear him talking about it. He's like, dude, that doesn't, that doesn't, the body doesn't work that oh way. I, so oh I would God. do, I would actually do that on purpose to see if the person, whenever I would do a TO, so a TO is called, it stands for turnover. So you go in when your sales guy or trainer calls you in to help you communicate the whole process or whatever. And I would throw words or phrases in there that I knew that the potential client didn't know, but I knew my trainer would know just to spice things up mm. and have fun. So mm -hmm. I just say, I throw a word out and, and I, and I see my trainer try not to laugh. And I'd be like, Oh yeah. So, yeah. so I would use bonch all the time. It was my favorite one. Oh my Cause God. a lot of people didn't know what that was. People know now, <laughs> dude, I, this morning I woke up hella early to work out at home because the baby's not home, so I can actually work out downstairs. Although I woke up my daughter. Where's your baby at? Uh, with uh, with Jessica, they went to go see her grandmother. Oh, I didn't know they left. Yeah, yeah. So when did they leave yesterday? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yesterday morning. So I'm <coughs> I'm I'm in there working out hella early, and a lot of times when I wake up early, I'll read articles in between sets, and I'll have all these like mind storms or whatever. I'm thinking about certain things, and I read this article, the science article, and it really annoyed the hell out of me. This, there was a science article that, that came out, and you'll see this. Uh, we'll make sure we put it up on the, on the video that talked about the genes uh, that people have when they can eat whatever they want and not gain any weight. And so, literally, the title, you know, the part of the headline was like, We all know that person that can eat like a horse and not gain any weight. And so, scientists identified these genes, and this is why some people are lean and you know, our genetics are to blame for lots of obesity. And I hate mm. stuff like this because- yeah. Here's your excuse. Whoosh. Yeah, they, they take data, they extrapolate and make these assumptions, which here's your all your all the evidence you need right here that this is complete uh, bullcrap. 
is that uh, either humans evolved at lightning speeds over the last 60 years because obesity went from 10% to a majority of Americans right. in like 60, 70 years. So we either developed brand new obesity genes and evolved super, which we've never seen that happen ever in, in the animal world or with humans, or, or it's our lifestyle. And our lifestyle radically changed in the last 70 years. Like, what changed more? Well, you're talking about our lifestyle. That, you're no. talking about 60 to 70 years right now. What was just 100 or 200 years? So, what was the percentage of obesity? It didn't, you weren't obese unless you were rich. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's got to be, it had to be even less than that. I've talked about this before, but if you pull up, <clears throat> if you were to Google or search um, circus fat man at the turn of the century, so like in the late 1800s. So, mm -hmm. Back in the day, kind of a terrible thing, circuses would travel, and part of their entertainment was their freak show, they used to call it. And these were people with deformities yeah. or were the weird. Bearded and people, lady it was, it was a thing back then. Yeah, bearded lady was one of them. Or, and people would pay, or like crab boy, and there would be a kid with a you know, terrible genetic deformity <clears throat> where his, you know, his hands would be like this. Yeah. And people would pay money. To, to stare at these people, right? And the circus fat man was one of the more popular ones. And it would be a guy that was so obese that people would pay money to see it. And they'd be like, oh my God, can you believe- it was believe, so rare. Can you believe somebody was that big? If you saw a picture of a circus fat man from wow. the turn of the century, they could walk around Walmart right now yeah. and blend in completely. Yeah. There would be no, nobody would, it would be nothing weird would be about it. Uh, so- no, that's not our genes. Sorry, our lifestyle changed dramatically, which takes me to another point. And I was thinking this, uh, you know, uh, politics has permeated everything so much that it's poisoned so many different things to the point where when we're talking about obesity and fitness and health, they have taken that and made it uh, a moral question. So if you're overweight, it's because you're a bad person. And that's why they defend it by saying, no, you know, fat is beautiful or fat is whatever. Yeah. Uh, if you're if you're fit, they're trying to shame you. You're morally superior, and then they try to twist it to say no, you're not more. You're worse, or whatever. It has nothing to do with morality. Mm -hmm. You could be a very moral good person and be very overweight. You could be a morally terrible person and be lean, and vice versa. It has nothing to do with mor morality at all. So we need to separate the two because that really hurts people in the pursuit of improving their health as they they, they they place that on themselves. Am I a bad person? Am I a good person? Neither. And it's it's not to discredit genetics either. I mean, obviously that sure. plays a role. I absolutely think that that plays a role. And I would think too that as we are, we get fatter and fatter and we keep having kids, I would think we start to evolve in that direction also. So. I think we'll evolve in the opposite direction. I think unless we solve the chronic health issues medically with uh, that, that are due to obesity, which I think we will, if we continue to just have tons of obesity and let's say we never solve those issues, the health issues, then what'll happen is we'll evolve to a point where eating lots of terrible food and not being active wouldn't be as harmful because all the people that it harms would die and not be able to reproduce and everybody else would be able that's the way it would go. But it would take it would take hundreds and hundreds of years to do yeah, that. Interesting. Evolution doesn't happen interesting that quickly. Anyway, <clears throat> so I came in this morning, right, to to uh, I, I was going to, well, I worked out earlier, but I came in early because I dropped my son off at school. And Doug is like, you know, what is that on your shirt? And I'm like, you never seen The Warriors? <clears throat> oh, I can't yeah. believe Doug has never seen Was the that in the 70s? Uh, I've never seen it either. Out? I just know of it. I've never. You've seen never seen The Warriors? Mm -mm. So oh, 1979. Yeah. And the, because the, the, the actual, go New York. the Golden yeah. State Warriors, I think, use the, the what? Don't they do like a yes. chant like that? Warriors. It's yeah. it's one of the best worst movies you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, I've never life. seen it. I just know that. I just know about it, and I know that the Golden State Warriors use the chant that comes. I know from Dude, that. movie. Do you know how many hip hop songs and <clears throat> pop culture, like how many like lines and in, in sayings and phrases from that movie? Really? Oh yeah, all that can you dig it came from the Warriors. You know, well, explain explain the premise of it again. I kind of forget. Dude, I know. It's so I don't know what it is about bad movies, but they always have a cult. <laughs> following yeah. there's something about them right that has this so it's and you're wildly attracted to these i love movies. weird movies <laughs> <laughs> love them i'm with you though i like yeah, yeah. Like, uh, i just want you to know you're are, proving to the audience our point about your, uh, no. cult. hey careful the, the cult Fan following favorite. for the warriors is gonna light you up <laughs> they have a very <laughs> very <laughs> fanatical following i tell you what yeah. dude if you're with your buddies <laughs> smoke a joint watch this movie best time of your life <laughs> if you you have to be high to watch any of sal's recommendations <laughs> yeah. that's that's the point of this message right 
<laughs> I mean, that's the standard. Yeah. So you can't be sober. Or watch yeah. it. No, <laughs> no. So, so this is how it is, right? So, um, there's all these gangs in New York, right? And you, you guys remember what was that movie? Outsiders. Yeah, no, not the Outsiders. That's actually a very that's a good movie. What's that movie, uh, Doug? It's a musical uh, oh, with gangs. West Side Story. West Side Story. So that's another. I won won a lot of awards, um, and that depicted gangs, and they'd sing and do their thing or whatever. So <laughs> yeah, this is it's, <laughs> the Warriors is not a musical, but it's it's it does kind of have a similar take in the sense that all these different gangs in New York, they all have different themes. Okay, so like like one gang is like the Baseball Furies, and they dress like in baseball uniforms, and they paint their face, and they have baseball bats. And then there's another gang called the Riffs, and they all practice kung fu. And it's really weird, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like these weird, the pimps. There's another gang called the Pimps, and they yeah. dress like pimps, and they walk like. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it starts out with all these, with the biggest gang in New York called the Riffs. Yeah. Holding a meeting and calling all the gangs of New York to meet. And it's this big outdoor meeting, and Cyrus is the name of the leader. And he gets up and, and he does this speech, and... <laughs> He talks about how if all the gangs just work together, we would be able to rule New York. Like, they don't have enough police, and he's doing this and that. And he, that's the the line, like, can you dig it? Like, that's where it comes from. And everybody's like, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much what happened with the mafia, right? They, they took over New York yeah. there for a minute. Yeah, so, so he does the speech, and then the leader of another gang shoots him, so assassinates him. So everybody sees him get assassinated, and then they blame it on the Warriors. And the Warriors are a gang from Coney Island. And so all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, everyone's after us. So they, they, they escape. And then the rest of the movie is they have to make it from New York City, I think it is, to Coney Island through the subways and the streets and fight their way back. So they fight yeah. all these gangs <laughs> on the way back, dude. It's so good. It's so good. It's kind of like Enter the Dragon. You sold, hey, Doug, bit. are you sold or what? You, you, are, know, you running home to watch but, this tonight? I know I'm curious. I'll be honest. <laughs> hey, I probably could get ten minutes. Hey, in. thirteen year old Doug, it would have loved it. Yeah, yeah. Year old, and that's when I saw it. I was thirteen. I was like, this is the greatest thing. Uh, and it's funny as they're fighting their way. First of all, the gangs are so dumb. Like one gang is called the Orphans, and they're like actually orphans. <laughs> it's so funny. But as they're going back, there's this woman who is a radio host, and she like reports for the Riffs, that big gang. Yeah. And they just show her mouth on the mic, and she's like. All right, baby, we got to get them warriors. Like this, like throughout the as they're fighting, she's like narrating, and it's so cheesy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such it reminds me of uh, those breaking uh, movies, the ones where everybody's break dancing, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, or like Breaking <laughs> New York style or something. Like they would just like would have these dance fights. Yeah, dude, that's it, a great it, movie, dude. Yeah. That's a, you I mean, like, that? again, no, it's not. like, it's horribly you cheesy and You and Justin awesome obviously be watching time. different stuff than Doug and I. Dude, yeah. it's great. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo, I think that's Yeah, the man. Well, you got to appreciate different genres, you know? Uh, oh, it's so good. There's a lot of bad movies that I used to really like. You didn't have, well, Rad. Rad is yours. Rad's a shitty movie. How like. dare you? Yeah. It's a shitty movie. <laughs> like, They Live. That's a hey, shitty movie, but it's awesome because it has, like, one-liner quotes. And, yeah. you know, it's like every Arnold movie yeah. is terrible. Yeah. The Last but, Dragon. The Last Dragon was a great, you guys ever watch The Last Dragon? Uh, that sounds more familiar. It's a it's a kung fu movie, but it's this black family, and there's this this oh, kid. I think I've seen. That. And his name his name is Bruce Leroy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bruce Leroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Instead of Bruce Lee. Yeah. And he fights Shonuff. Yeah. Shonuff is the main dude. Yeah. And he's this 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 dude. And this I can't believe you remember, remember all the characters. Well, I've too. seen them like a hundred times each, bro. Oh, wow, and then man. when he fights him, he gets the glow because he gets like this. Now, do you make do you make your son yeah. watch some of these? And how does that go over? Uh, we haven't seen some of these yet. Okay. But yeah, he's too young to smoke weed, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> yes. I can't do that because you need to be high. <laughs> yeah. wait on that He'll one. watch it. Be like, what the hell? No, I think I, I no. All joking aside, <clears throat> I think I'm for sure gonna introduce him now. He's 16, so oh. I think maybe he'll like him. Speaking we'll of see. sons, dude, my boy, right now, it's uh, it's so sad. This is the first time. So he's like a little over two now. This is the first time I've watched him like fight a cold. And what I mean, like he's been sick, right? So he's got like, and when he was a you know an infant, he would get those normal infant colds for three or four days, spike to fever, come down like. But this stuff, like he's been sick since last Wednesday, and I feel so bad because I think it's the cold that you and I got when we flew from Arizona. And it, I mean, I, I have it lingering a little bit, but it's not bad. I don't even feel sick. I've been, I've worked out since then. Like, I, I just, I don't feel. But he is like, it's fucking him up. And bad. everybody was tested for COVID. You, yeah, yeah, wife, everyone, every, yeah, everyone in my house. I got has, tested too. Yeah, so it's not that. It's but the cold's got him really bad, and 
he's good in the day. Like we're, you know, he's playing outside and he's fine. He doesn't seem that bad. But at nighttime, he can't breathe and he, and he, you'll hear him like all congested. And then you'll hear him like gasping for air. It's like the scariest thing ever, man. Listen uh, to your, I worst. hate that. Man. Oh, dude. There's just, nothing worse than when your kid's sick because you can't do anything. What yeah, can you yeah. do? And he never, he, dude, he's such a good kid. Like he never cries, whines and stuff like that. And he's, you can tell he feels so bad because he just, he'll, oh. Oh, and I'm just like, oh, buddy, dude, I feel bro, so bad right brutal. now. Does that? Uh, and it feels worse because I know I gave it to him. I was like, oh, dude, yeah. uh, you know, and I shouldn't have been touching him or kissing him. I was like, ah, oh, I'm not that bad. He's not gonna get it that bad. I had the weak immune system of the three of us. I thought I would get the worst. And but Katrina and him have been fucked up this last week, dude. It's if mom gets sick. Is it, yeah, it's it's usually if mom gets it, then the kid gets it really bad. Especially if she's breastfeeding. Yeah. Like if she didn't get it and she was breastfeeding, that she would have passed on antibodies and then they wouldn't get it. Oh yeah, because you know? yeah. nobody, nobody in my house got it. Oh wow, really? Yeah, Jessica didn't get it. The baby didn't. Katrina get Katrina normally no normally doesn't get it, dude. She's it seems invincible, and she has a way stronger immune system than I do. But she got it, and she got it worse. Both her and him got it worse than what I had. You and I had like this little light. I kinda. barely knew I had anything. That's how I felt. Yeah, I was like for a minute there, I was like, is it my allergies? I don't know what this is, but and that's why I think I didn't stress about it because I was like, oh, it's so mild, it's not going to. But it hit them both. Yeah, worse. I I wonder how bad and weak people's immune systems are right now as they're starting to go back out into the world because they definitely expose themselves less to pathogens mm -hmm. on purpose, right? So we purposely did that. But I wonder if that means we're going to have like a really bad cold and flu season. Yeah, like everything else is going to uh, get uh, pounded. You know? Yeah. What, what, when is the official like cold and flu season start? Do you know when that is? I know the not peak is it. February. The peak is yeah, February. I believe the peak is February. I think it's starting to winter. kick in now. And part of it, I believe, is because peak kids are in school. And usually that means that we start to see it ramp up. Because there, there was a lot of theories that this we were going to see a really shitty winter coming, right? I yeah. mean, between COVID and everything like that. Like you said, everybody being indoors and not outside getting sunlight. Like everybody's immune system is probably going to be weakened. Everybody's way fatter. I told you guys about those. The, the Now the reports on, on obesity among kids is way yeah, hot. It's crazy. Like, it accelerated at, at, twi at twice the speed. So October. Yeah. So, so next month. Yeah, see? So right wow. about now it starts to hit um, or or – Soon, next two weeks. Yeah. yeah, it'll start to. This hit is the best so. weather, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's this, already turning into fall. This, this is, is my so nice favorite time of the year. Yeah, I, I love October, November time right now. Yeah, mm. it just stays all nice and hot and I warm. But you get the breezy, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and and it's best time for sports, dude. Yeah, you got football in full swing right now. Basketball will fire up in November, like or mm. even in October. For this is when season. everybody like in Santa Cruz goes down to the beaches because not a lot of people know like how nice it is. Like they assume it's the summer, but it's just like, dude, this is when you go because then the water's still kind of warm. You know, over the summer it warmed up, and then it's like, dude, perfect weather. It you know how you know how backwards I had that forever. You just would assume that because it's in here over here in San Jose, it's like you know ninety nine degrees in July. No, it's overcast over there. Yeah, yeah it's just not as nowhere near it. And then right now, like you said, everybody starts going, oh, it's winter's getting ready to come or falls here or whatever. So they no one's going out to the beach. So you get the beach to yourself, and it's the best. Well, yesterday yeah. was the warmest day we've had all year at our place, seventy nine yeah. degrees. Yeah, yeah over like, the weekend beautiful. we were at, we were up at my brother's uh, to see his new baby, and he's in Half Moon Bay. <laughs> gorgeous day. It was gorgeous over the weekend up yeah. there. Like you're like eight, like low mid mid to low eighties. Nice little breeze, and yeah. it was it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it is one. really nice out there. It's funny. He's got a little, you know, his his son is uh, Angelo. He's two months old, and he just looks. It looks like my brother's clone. It's so weird yeah. to see his like. I'm looking at this baby. I'm like, oh my god, bro. He looks exactly now, like it, my brother. Isn't the theory on that like if the if the baby takes on one parent or the other that you have stronger genes? Is that what the is that the prevailing theory on that or do you I don't not know, subscribe man. to that because there's so many genes. There's genes yeah. for eyes yeah. and face and skin, but then there's genes for personality and well, and they kind of change. I, I swear they kind of change and more from like really looking like you to then you know looking like my wife and then it's like that's how I felt. Like, there's been times where people yeah. are like, oh, he's Max is a hundred percent his mom, nothing of you. <laughs> he's looking more like you now. Well, then I get that. Then I'll get other people be like, oh my God, he looks like you're You know what he looks me. a lot like you? His, uh, his eyes. Yeah, his he eyes. He has your like, you know how you look like you have eyeliner on all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, I mean, he does. He, <laughs> like, you look like Chris Angel. Yeah. yeah. No, he's got that. He's got that too. He's got yeah. that. In, yeah. And he has big, I have big round eyes, brown yeah. eyes, and he has the long eyelashes. Yeah. So he definitely has that. My son, my oldest and the son. the fat cheeks he's got too. He's got the cheeks. Yeah. It's, not, it's cute. My yeah. oldest son. Cheeks for weeks. Look like his mom. It, like, 
forever. And then as he got older and started going through puberty, he started looking more and more like me. But when he was little, it's all I ever heard. Oh, you look so much like your mom. Yeah. You look nothing like your dad. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it even happens later because I used to, so growing up, everybody said I was a spitting image of my mom. And then now as I, as in my, as I got into my thirties, everyone was like, oh my God, you look just like your father looked. Uh-huh. So it'll, it just keeps doing that. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I, I was a spitting image of my mom growing up and then now nobody thinks I look anything like my mom. I look everything like my dad. Well, yeah. Your so. face is going to masculinize as you go through, as you get testosterone as yeah. a male. So of course you'll start to look more like. Well, yeah. I'm talking about when I'm 30 though. I'm not talking about when I was, like oh, when wow. I was 20, everyone still thought. Even when I, you were 20. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when I was okay. 20, everyone still thought I looked just like my mom. For the, mm. It wasn't until I started like get my hair thinning. <laughs> <laughs> Some gray hair, looking older, and stuff like that. They're like, "Oh shit, you look just like your dad." Yeah. <laughs> so it happened later. I, that, that, but yeah, when your kids are sick, that's a war. That's an absolute war. I remember the first time. So obviously, my oldest was my first. So this is when I first experienced it. But he was, I want to say, year and a half, maybe two, and it was the first time he really got sick, and he had pneumonia. And I remember when he was little, I he used to love to play with trains. So we get him Thomas the Train. He had this big train table. And he'd always be out there playing every single day, all the time. Well, I remember we're sitting down, and it was the first time he just sat next to me and watched TV for like three hours and just didn't move, and his little cheeks were red because he had a, a fever. Yeah. Mm. And I, that was, I you cried. You just know. Oh, yeah. dude, it was one of the first times I cried for I my I think kid. you definitively know that time, like, yeah, the first time they actually were real sick. Like, yeah. like for me, it was, it was actually on Ethan's birthday. It was like his fifth birthday, I think. And we were up in Tahoe and it was snow. We're all there to, to enjoy the snow and everything. And he just w- had like some stomach flu and was just puking like the whole time. That's the first time he's ever even puked. And I was just like sleeping, you know, in the same room the whole night because I'm like, oh no, you know, I can't Dude, believe you're sick. You ever have your kid wake you up in the middle of the night? Like you hear the quiet, like on your door, and you're like, huh? yeah, dad. And you open the doors, like throw up on them. I threw up. Oh yeah. fuck! <laughs> we gotta do the whole thing, yeah. dude. What do I do? I, I always like whenever that happened to me, I was always confused for like fifteen minutes. I don't know what to do. What do I do first? Like I don't know. I know. Just stand I don't there. Have gloves. There's a typical uh, first time dad, right? Yeah, there. dude. Like, uh, what do I? How do I get oh. your clothes off? What do I do with the bed? Do we throw everything away? Just throw it away. Where's fuck the it, wipes? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know anything. Anyway, uh. did you guys hear the report from the FDA on uh, Chantix? Are you guys familiar with the drug? Chantix? No. Oh, okay. I've seen. No. Okay, so there was a video with I think it's Kyle Dunnigan. He he did a spoof uh, like with Bill Maher, like doing a commercial for Chantix. Or no, it was the guy from um, uh, uh, Goodfellas. What's that guy's name? Anyway, Ray? that guy Ray Liotta. Or yeah, Ray? yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray Liotta. So he did a funny video like with him. Like, just, is it something about like trying to get you off of cigarettes? I tried everything to quit smoking: cocaine, everything. Nothing worked. Then I tried fucking Chantix. Okay, so that's what Chantix has been prescribed for. So, right, okay. FDA approved drug, been around now for a little while. Yeah. And you take it, and it affects the nicotine, the receptors that nicotine attaches to. So, okay. it makes you not want to smoke. So, it's been prescribed for a while. Well, guess what just happened? <coughs> what? It was really weird because an FDA approved drug. So, I don't know how this happened. They're pulling it completely off because it causes cancer. Oh shit! Yeah, it's, been conne- it's been connected to cancer. So wow. they're they're, start, they're they're Doug. Maybe you can pull up an article on it. Yeah, dude. We're so, getting you off the cancer sticks to put you on a different. How kind of cancer. fucked up! That's you go off cigarettes, fucked, dude, because of cancer, and then you take something that's way less fun. Now the <laughs> the idea the idea is that it it it, it pairs with the receptor, and is it, does that mean like so? Let's say I'm taking this Chantix and I decide to smoke. Is it? Effect, does it keep it from pairing to those receptors and so I don't get the same feeling or does it make me feel nauseous because it does it and that makes me not want to smoke like how do, what, what's the mechanism that makes you not want to smoke anymore that's a good that's a good uh, because what I'm the reason why I'm asking is what I'm wondering is you know did people keep smoking because they're like oh this chanting is supposed to keep the, the nicotine from pairing to receptors so I'm just going to keep smoking while that's I a good do this. question I don't know I and think, I wonder if that is where, where this could be coming from I, well no so the nicotine so here's the thing nicotine in uh, cigarettes and tobacco isn't the bad thing no it's all the other shit yeah nicotine you know is it good or bad for you I mean it's kind of neutral it's, it's considered a nootropic right yeah and in, uh, this is a Pfizer product uh, is it Pfizer owns Chantix Yes, Doug. Can you can you forget the uh, can you look up just uh, a news article, not not the what the FDA says. See what the news articles are saying um, about it. Yeah, voluntary approved cancer risk. Yeah, it's, it's cancer. There's a carcinogen presence. Wow, it is it. Pfizer, huh? Yeah. So now here's the deal: is it the Chantix itself, or is there something in the the tablets or something 
that has a car that's a carcinogen. That's the thing that I, I'm not sh sure about because the article makes it look like it might be something in the drug that's not necessarily the drug itself. Mm -hmm. Is that what's going on? I don't know. Do you know the history of Pfizer at all? No. You know, like no, not really. how it got built and who owns it and all that no. shit like that. Like how to get that They all have a shady past, though. If you dig deep, yeah, I, well, you, uh, like right? Bayer, yeah, for Bayer, instance, Bayer, Bayer's like that. Oh, Real Bayer's shady past. Ma yeah, Bayer. Look and it up. And Monsanto. Yeah. Some yeah. of the yeah. worst history. Monsanto was <clears throat> Agent Orange. Yeah, they made Agent yeah. Orange. What does yep. it say, Doug? And didn't didn't Monsanto yeah. and Bayer pair? partner up for something didn't they partner up and uh create a product too i believe i so. think they yeah. may have uh, merged yeah they, they merged one of them bought the other one i don't remember i think who. so i think yeah. maybe monsanto bought bear i'm not sure we'll have to look that up old companies get together mm. it can't be good dude yeah. so chantix uh, has high levels of cancer causing agents called nitrosamines if i'm saying that correctly nitrosamines okay. nitrosamines wow Wow, isn't that great? Yeah. I just wanted, what, a, what a terrible... Now, I, okay, so... What, how, hold on a second. How pissed off would you be? I know. That's why I'm like, can you sue? Like, yeah, where, where are you at with this? If you were somebody who was smoking cigarettes like crazy, you decide to get on this Chantix to stop that because your kids have all pressured you. Dad, you're going to die because you're going to have cancer because you smoke all these cigarettes. Okay, I'm I'm committed to this thing. Then you get this, and then you find out that this could cause cancer or does cause cancer. In you, you can't because well, they're doing a recall of it. So yeah. so you you would have to prove that Pfizer knew this and hid it or didn't tell anybody because they went through the regulatory process. So yeah. what do you do? Sue the FDA? Good luck with that. So you know what what's this the deal? Is what happens when you get uh, time to go on and you can see like how a lot of these things play out. And that's, I think, you know, it's it's, it's good to be. And, and, yeah, and it that, happens how, kind of. Well, well yeah. how yeah, how long was Chantix in, in like be, the whole process to become legal, right? So for it to right. get FDA approved, usually it took like a long time. Usually like it's ten a five years. or ten year process. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was like ten years. It's a long process. So for ten years they had that product going, and they this never came about. It wasn't until they got it out to the masses, tons of people, and then we find out that this could cause cancer or has caused cancer. To yeah, some and people. again, how mad would you be because? You of you're you're avoiding an enjoyable thing that mm -hmm. gives you cancer for something that is not enjoyable that gives you cancer. What a shitty trade! I know. <laughs> like I, I know. Give me the damn cigarette. <laughs> like that was way more fun than this slap bullshit. In your face, yeah. Still, so you look at deal. So Bayer is paying sixty six billion for Monsanto. So they, yeah, this they was did. back uh, a while back. Yeah, yeah no, I I think we actually talked about this on the yeah, show years ago. Or at least so. I remember. I think I watched a documentary on this whole thing about the the two of them getting together, and I believe they got together. <laughs> and I want to say like. Do they? Who owns? Yeah, who some, owns? Um, what's the fucking spray that got all kinds of trouble? What's the? Yeah, uh, Monsanto. 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 Yeah, yeah, Monsanto the, owns that, right? The, uh, yeah. Glyphosate. Thank, uh, Roundup. No, I know, Roundup. Roundup. Thank yeah. you. Look, brain fart there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they own that company too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had Agent Orange, Roundup, and then Bayer was also, I think, uh, involved with creating gas for the yeah. chambers for the, yes. that killed the Jews. Nazi yes. uh, Germany. Bayer made the gas. Get all part of the chemical warfare. That's still, a, you know, happy family. Where's cancel culture when you need them? How the fuck have they not been canceled? I don't understand. Yeah, how's, I don't how have they it. not been canceled? I have no idea. <laughs> we got people that can't say certain words <laughs> they said for three years ago. You know they got what? They just put a flag up and they're like, hey, we're good. You no, know, you know what it is? Is that cancel culture is being wielded by uh, by media. Well, so that's the, what I'm saying. The wield them That's what like I'm saying team. right now. It's just like we're out here canceling somebody who said some some something on an interview 10 years ago, right? But you're not going to cancel. Yeah, but you're not going to cancel you're this company. cancel the most horrific like, <laughs> history you've ever not heard the, of. And by the way, and not I'm, even, not, yeah, I'm not agreeing with cancel culture either. I'm just saying, yeah. like, come on, get your priorities fucking straight. Yeah, dude. exactly. Dude, <laughs> bigger at, fish to fry. Look at the, the what's his name? Uh, is it the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau? I don't yeah. know if he's the Prime Minister. So look, look at this guy. Do you know how many pictures there are of, of him in I, blackface? Yeah, blackface, blackface. brown face. Literally... <laughs> If you put on, if you had blackface and you had pictures taken of you, you would be eviscerated on yeah. social media, right? It's like a racist. Everybody agrees upon that, right? This guy's done it like five times. Who? Who is this? Justin Trudeau. He's, he's like the prime minister. He's of like Canada. the darling of you know uh, of the that left political party in Canada. Like good looking, I mean, super, you know, virtues. He's the guy that radical says radical up there with him. Yeah, like he won't say like man hole. He'll say like person hole just because he wants to try and be like he's an idiot, right? That's my <laughs> my opinion. I think he's the most fake virtue signaling person of all time. Yeah. Totally gets Birthing a pass. person. Totally gets a pass yeah. for blackface. Like and has done it. You can literally find pictures of this guy. What? Yeah, where, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, See, it's happening again. Oh Look at that God. picture of him, bro. Hey, one That's day so ago, bad, this is dude. circulating right now. Yeah, now what they're, they're trying to use it against him, and we'll see what happens. But it's not the first time. 
This Dude, don't you feel that every political person that gets a position has? Yes, they, they've got They they make sure they get in by having some kind. That's of That's how dirt I feel too. Them. I think there's like the what's that the, like the skulls like an underground meeting yeah. of all of them, and they all have like they take pictures of them doing something that like is like yeah. you ever get out of line. This is coming out. Bro, that's, yeah, that's the you theory. ever mess with us? We're throwing this out that's there. That's the theory behind Epstein. I, bro. I could get yeah. on with the conspiracy. Sure. That was the whole. On this that one. was the whole theory behind. That's just logical. That's exactly. That's how I feel. It's not conspiracy. It, it, people yeah. in <laughs> positions of power, that's just, that's a chess move. Well, didn't they say that Epstein's island, right? His little weird, you know, island or whatever, that there were rooms with hidden cameras and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the theory is that he would bring very powerful people, politicians, celebrities. Then they'd have sex with underage girls and do terrible shit. They'd have this, this well, film on them. And then now they got you by the balls. Right? There, yeah. There's this whole, actually, it's a pretty cool, uh, Eli actually turned me on to it. It's like uh, on Audible, uh, the, the interviews that this this journalist um, gathered and like did recordings with Epstein. And so they get really uh, deep into like how much of a mastermind and manipulator he was yeah. uh, with everybody. Like just, you know, what he would do and to the extent he had this whole... Uh, system that he would apply to gain their trust and then literally and deliberately, uh, you know, throw them under the bus and then extort money from them. And and he was just like a master manipulator. Dude, no wonder the Clintons just killed, I mean, he killed himself for everybody. Sorry. Yeah, he <laughs> killed himself. My bad. Well, why? How? What happened with that? Like, we don't, that just kind of got. COVID came and we just kind of literally the craziest <laughs> shit of all yeah, time. It was like one of the craziest yeah. stories yeah. ever. None of these we, people in power want any of that to get out. Disappeared. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like no one's like, talking about oh, it. Oh yeah. Like where, where's the girl at? Where's she at? Is she in prison right now? Or is she not yeah, in prison? Yeah. Seen, uh, yeah. When's that trial start? Yeah. I want to hear that trial. I she, think it, it was in, in, in process and then they got, they bought more time somehow. And like, uh, she was able to <laughs> like, you know, what's going to happen. Extend it further. And yeah, in a year or two, no one's going to even no. pay attention. They'll keep extending it. And then mm. it'll all of a sudden just disappear. Like, I yeah. don't even hear anybody asking questions about it anymore. Now, just kind of, now yeah. what's the over under on her suiciding? Well, I mean, I thought for sure it already happened, mm. but I don't think so now. Now I think no, the she's strategy not even going to make it. That the strategy far. is what Justin's saying right now. Yeah. They'll just keep pushing the court date out. It'll be something in two years. COVID will be on its you know fifteenth different strain or variant now. Everyone will be talking about what's going on in the world. No one will be talking yeah. about that. One hundred percent, and she'll get to live because there's not going to be <laughs> any. There's no be yeah. no reason to there's, kill her. There's be so like, many things she's on the seventh page. About, dude, you know, it's like and there's so yeah. many things the news to be concerned about. It's just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, you know Forget what? So it. it is in the it is in the news. Doug just pulled her up, but the problem is that sh the world has gone so crazy that man, I swear to God, you have to be. It has to be the craziest news to make it to the front page or to go viral around, right? Just like the alien stuff, Justin. Yeah. The government, com <laughs> government comes out, it's like, yeah, you know, there's probably aliens and we've been following UFOs for a while yeah, and like, nobody cares. Wait, what? Like, nobody cares. Yeah. Is this what? coming from like the Pentagon? You're yeah. just like, what? What is wrong with everybody? I yeah. feel like that's the that's the government testing to see how much of a foothold they have with this whole COVID thing. It's like, let's throw some crazy shit out. Yeah, let's see it's if just, they fall asleep. It's just like, hey, they're falling asleep. Don't worry, they're yeah. falling asleep. <laughs> or Lizard people may be crazy. real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody said anything. I think we can keep... <laughs> yeah, we're good now. We, we, we got them. <laughs> we got them. <laughs> you know? Oh, hey, man. Speaking of crazy <clears throat> stuff, I learned something today, Adam, that... This fucking killed me. Hilarious. What, what? Okay, so you know how Doug, you know how yes. Doug buys domain names every <laughs> once in a you. while. I'm glad you're bringing this up. Can uh, we uh, talk uh, on the show about yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so a few this, this actually relates back to us talking about your, you know, alluring eyes. Yeah. So yeah. this, this is if <laughs> the only people who know what I'm talking about are people who've listened to our show since the beginning because we haven't said this in a, in a long time. Okay. Doug bought the domain a long time ago. Poo Wait for whisper. it. Poon Whisper. <laughs> com. <laughs> com. Do you really that? own that? Yeah. Cost you like $9 a month to keep that? No, a year, a year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, well, you, you got to understand back in the day when this show was a little crazier, that was actually an idea that was tossed out because it came up in the show, right? Yeah. I, 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 Wait I a minute. Can hold you on imagine a that? It came, like up, a it came up in the show. And, and, Wait a minute. Hold on. I, I, hold I on. think, I think, I on think Doug's cover. right. I think at one point it was. You guys were start. You were calling me that, right? The Poon Whisperer. And mm -hmm. we, I think it, and I think this was one of your ideas. I'm gonna, at least I'm going to blame it on you. No, hold on. I don't remember any business idea right well, now. I, just called I, you. I think that you told Doug that maybe it could become like a segment. Like, it, oh, we could do like a segment where, you know, Adam talks right. about this. Right, you like oh, relationship yeah. Trust advice. Me. Yeah. Uh, we have a whole list of crazy ideas that have come up over the years. Yeah. You know what, though? You certainly Hold do. on a second. 
That is a pretty brilliant idea. I think I did. Come <laughs> yeah. See, it was I think I did. And, I, and we own the domain, so that's yeah. great. Yeah. Have you gone through like how many domains? We do got to make own, a website. You know? I mean, you guys. We, we own dozens of domains. Yeah. Some which will never be used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there'll be a second. We might get lucky though. One day somebody's like, you know, <laughs> some poon whisperer writes a freaking best-selling novel and he needs that. You know, yeah. they'll be, hey, they'll they'll be send like, it for hundred grand. All of a sudden, like sexy music will play, then the camera will go on you. There'll be like a, a border around your face. Like, Today's advice from the poon whisperer. Yeah. Katrina's so happy we're beyond those days. And so I remember I used to come home from work every day. She's like, "Why do you have to be the douchebag of the three guys? Like, like somebody <laughs> has to." Yeah. 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 You're the best at it. We nominated you. I wouldn't have been good at yeah. it. I yeah. do it. That's the best at convincing you that we needed to do it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, somebody has to be this guy. We're, we're like, you're kind of single. You know, yeah. so yeah. somebody's got to represent. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe that. Yeah, Actually, owns a domain. Uh, what if that, where, where are you guys like, yeah, leaning over his computer when he did that? When did that come up? No, I, I don't. Uh, how did that come up? I, I don't remember how that even uh, came we up. You said you own that. I said something, and then you said we own this. I don't remember. We were talking about like old episodes, I think, and then that sort of just made its way to the front. Oh, I is, remember. It is, I can't say it. It is mind-blowing to me that, and I guess, we. I mean, we have quite a few podcast friends, and I don't know anybody else that, that shares that. It's still crazy. And I remember when we were doing this, and we were like in episode four or 500, and we were like, dude, would you believe that people start – and then they go back and they listen to every single episode. Yeah. We're now, what are we, 16, 1700 deep or something like that? Yeah. That still happens all the time today. That is crazy. Yeah. I'll get someone who DMs me and they're like, yeah, I've been catching up. I'm on 300 and something like that. I'm like, oh my God, bro, just go to where we're yeah. at now. It's so much better That's than what so it used to be. So many hours to get yeah. through. But you know what? Like You got it. Like so much love and respect for somebody who does that because yeah. the, the appreciation you have to have to, to go back and listen to that garbage. I sure as hell hope like they see <laughs> they see us get better. Yeah. You know, like you know, they see hey, that transformation. I know. Could you imagine you, you get someone, they start all the way over and then they're like, get 400, one of us said something they're like oh my god i'm done listening uh, oh <laughs> actually you see somebody brought up about uh when we had this discussion about social media and like what kind of impact oh, that was yeah. going to have and they're like we had our own little predictions about it and then to see that now the current state of uh how we're all basically held hostage by all these stupid social we should go back and listen media to that. warriors see if our did predictions guys, came right yeah, yeah did you guys see the thread that's on the the private forum right now the the best tips from Mind Pump or Did you guys read through that thread? I read through some of it. It was really good. Yeah, there, there's yeah. some really good ones on there. There's some really funny ones. There's one that I forgot that I even talked about. I don't even know how it came up. I think Justin was actually talking about Courtney and how she is all anal with the dishes or something like that. And he was all frustrated. <laughs> yeah. And I said, that's how I am. Like, I get really frustrated when Katrina doesn't put the silverware and like all the forks go in this part of the dishwasher, all the spoons. Yeah, and then when they're washed, you put them yeah, in. Yeah, hella people said that. That like was like OCD a life-changing about tip. Like, yeah. <laughs> you want to so know something? That's how I do it now. Oh, yeah? Me too. Yeah. Oh, shit. You yeah. Guys are, oh, that exactly. makes me feel so good yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Most uh, influential thing you've ever said. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's the value you brought. Oh, man, bro. That's the that's best, that's right the best I got. We nailed it down to right, 20 thing. years of personal training. They're like, hey, you know what? I yeah. fucking put my forks different. Hey, in the, at, yeah, your, at your funeral one day, Game I'm going to go Adam really changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> he must have shaved years off of dishwashing yeah. for me. <laughs> I was more time yeah. to spend with my no family. No kidding. Neither one of you guys did that. And then after that, huh? Yeah. Yep, you know, yep. I, I wish I remember uh, when and when I started doing that or who I'm sure I obviously I learned it from somebody else. But uh, yeah, yeah, once you do it one time, you realize, oh, my God, why? Why did I ever just throw them in there before? If I could just discipline myself mm -hmm. to put them all in the same place when you undo it, it's like because that's one of the worst parts about putting dishes away. Right. I don't know about you guys' house, mm -hmm. but like you, washing dishes, is not a big deal. But if the dishwasher is clean and full. There's like this, who's going to unload it? You know, nobody wants to unload it. It's like, and, and part of that I know is because of the silverware. That's the worst part. Yeah. Taking the silverware totally. out takes the longest out of all the dishes. No, I hate pots and pans, dude. Like, oh, yeah? Yeah, fuck that shit. Oh, you mean my... washing them? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, you were never a dishwasher, though, were you? Did you ever wash dishes as a job? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I mean, Oh, I, did you? Yeah, I did all kinds of shitty jobs. So here's too, what I want I didn't know. like it. Here's what I want to know, and it still hasn't happened. I don't understand this. Uh, if you've ever washed dishes in a restaurant, they have the legit dishwasher. It's yeah. literally you you slide shit in there, and well, I could put this in huge like spray thing. Bro, and I could put a whole. I could put a, a roast beef on a plate in there, yeah, and it'll you clean just that shit shove off. it in there. You put everything in there. You I know where you're going with this. Why haven't they put that in houses? Yeah, yes. you close both Thank doors. You, you hit the button, and literally, it takes ten minutes. It, it doesn't sure. matter how you arrange it. I'm pretty sure that those are like fifty thousand dollar dishwashers. Yeah, Is that why? Yeah, yeah I'll buy one. I'll yeah, 
<laughs> Most people are like, mm, should we put dude, a two-car garage on the house? It's or the should we Lamborghini get that fucking dishwasher and dishwashers. Dude, it cleans the shit out of stuff. But then again, uh, I used to have, there was this huge, when I used to- Look that up. I want to know what a commercial dishwasher is. I yeah. bet it's really expensive. Probably. Yeah. I used to, what I, I washed was my first job, right? So I was at a, at a pizzeria. And then every once in a while, they would make the sauce in this huge, like, it's like as tall as Doug, right? This huge metal pot. And the bottom always would have burnt sauce. And they'd give it to me and be like, here you go, Sal. And there was no other way to take it off than literally chipping it off yeah. little by little. So I'd be like, Ch -ch -ch all just, it would take you me know, an hour. You know what I do that, that oh, here's another, you know, cleaning dish t tip for you guys. Oh, I just man, think you're when it, where your pots and pans. I almost all, rarely ever cook in a normal pot or pan. I almost always iron skillet because iron skillet you use you use the the, the well you use the chain mail thing to, to yeah and that it. thing I mean you do that it's on there chain mail yeah it's you like, mean steel wool <coughs> yeah whatever <laughs> it's not steel wool it's you're not going, wool you're getting medieval on that thing yeah it's like it's like more like chain mail yeah, no I think it's steel wool I think yeah, it's it not is. steel wool I let you get away with that no. though so. <laughs> pull that up. <laughs> it's not wool. Pull it up, Doug. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah, uh, I know what steel wool is, dude. Oh man. Oh, dude. Yeah. I'm getting. But I, I forgot to tell you guys. Oh, oh wow. Look at that. Oh wow. That's it. No way. Four grand. What? Okay, I'm getting that, dude. Four grand. You know I'm how loud they are, though. You literally could shut. Yeah, but they do them there. fast, though. Aren't they fast? Ten they, minutes. Yeah. So ten minutes, and your shit is cl and it's cleaner than it's ever been in, in your in ever. Wow. Dude, oh, I had wow. a, I have a, yeah, I have a, we're a, missing out. A nosy neighbor, man. You guys just being loud. You just, yesterday, I, uh, so I got the 18, well, day before yesterday, I got the, my quad back to getting fixed. And I literally, okay, first day gets dropped off in my place. I want to fire it up, make sure it runs. I fire it up. I take it one time around the block, pull it in my garage. That's it. Yeah, I don't use Next day, oh. I'm loading it in my, my truck. So, same thing. I, I, I fire it up. I, I drive it around the block one time. And here comes my neighbor. Walking across the street. Oh, I yep. see. Um, see? see? Look at look. there it is. That's what I use. He oh, does no, use chainmail. I, I use the Scotch. So you the guys, Scot Scotch Bright. You guys yeah. have different ideas. Well, maybe that's why your your pan washing sucks, bro. No, that's why it's uh, you got the wrong actually. shit. Yeah. You get, hey, you get the wrong the shit. Also, someone shoots an arrow at you. You got yourself some protection. Exactly. You got some protection. All right, you know, you all right Justin. I'm anyway. glad you just right. with that. I just you won. You won. Anyway. Well, what is it? Well, now Justin's got me on. What's the Scotch Bright one? The stainless steel. That's because that's what I use. What is that? Oh, that's uh, steel wool. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like steel wool, but it's yeah, not. sort of a hybrid. By the way, if you light steel anyway. wool on fire, it's cool. You ever done that? Oh yeah, it's <laughs> the whole thing burns really weird. Yeah, it is. Yeah, cool. yeah. Show your kid. Squirrel, and, uh, squirrel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, continued. Uh, oh so no, I, neighbor you know, comes you, over. Yeah, it's, yeah, you killed the story already. But I was just powder cream too. I got. Yeah. I have one. I don't know if you guys have a neighbor like this, but I like. Have, I now have found my who my nosy annoying neighbor is. Right, like I feel like everybody has one on the block. Uh huh. Like, and she early on was like one of the first ones to come talk to me. So I actually really liked her. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, she's sweet. But what I realized now, she's like, oh, she's just nosy. She's a nosy neighbor who comes over all the time. And she came. Yeah, I hope she's fucking listening to this. Uh, <laughs> and she came over. I just thought it was so I thought it was so rude. It's like, first of all, I, I it was I just got the eight my ATV back. I literally first gear. I was not acting like a kid and run around. I literally wanted to take it around the block one time mm -hmm. to make sure that it was running. I just paid for What'd it. What'd she say? Push. She just came over and made a big deal about it. Like the, literally the the second time, the second day. Okay? Like you're not supposed to do that type of deal. Well, yeah. You, I mean, it's loud. It's really loud. So I, I hundred percent, and I'm aware of that. It would be super annoying if someone was doing that at nine o'clock at night wow. or five in the morning, or I was driving around the block all the time on the street, which it's not for. It's a for She's off like, road. I'm shutting this down. But I mean, I, yeah, it was like it was like I literally wrote on time, and she was like, "Is this going to become like a regular thing?" And I'm like, "No, she didn't." Yeah, she did. And I'm like, uh, no. I said, I'll probably take this to my other house. I yeah. just got it back from a shop, and I just want to make sure it was running okay. Yeah. But it's like midday, like yeah. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> One time around the block takes me 20 seconds. You should have said yes. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I was like, I was trying to be nice, but I was really annoyed by it. It bothered me all day long. Katrina's like, why are you so upset? I was like, my neighbor right now, like... I really liked everybody. Now I don't like this chick because she came over and did that to me. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's. Are, I thought I was being considerate. Are too. you going to ask me about things? All I know. The time? I should have been be a regular like, thing. Should have been a small I had, ass like that. Yeah, I had this guy randomly just like show up uh, in my backyard and was like walking through, uh, and like dogs are going crazy and everything. At the new place? Yeah, new place. This is oh. my first impression. Some guy down the street. So he had a house that was like. Not necessarily up against uh, my property, but like he was trying to find his way through. And his excuse was like, 
oh, I just wanted to see like how I could go through here and then get to the trail and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, why are you barging through my backyard, dude? <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, oh, I'm a neighbor. I have this house down there. I'm like, uh, so should I just blaze through your house? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like at this, I don't understand what's happening. You're gonna right put now. up a fence or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, now nah, I'm just getting electric fence. Like, yes. mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a bunch of angry old guys. Yeah, I, know, <laughs> no. I, know. I w- see. Get I thought I was house. being super considerate, and she was all snarky and stuff. And then I also, you know, call it a toy. It's not a fucking toy. <laughs> she said that. <laughs> yeah. She, oh, I see you got a. I see you got a new toy. I'm like, no, it's like ten years old. I said, she'd be like, your toy is just as loud. I hear you use that shit every night because <laughs> your husband can't do his job. Yeah. I, uh, your house vibrates a little. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The sound just takes it to another level. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I that's mean, what I like to do, yeah. dude. So I got to tell you guys, uh, my she entire. Short, yeah. I hope you, know, you fall and break hair. your hip. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, stop. That's me. Hey, so I want to tell you guys that, uh, so remember I told you my dad was using Ned. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Now my mom's using Ned because of the capsules, right? Because it's easier for her to take. She loves it. Yeah. Now my aunt's using it. Wow. I'm starting to get that whole generation. You would have been a great drug dealer. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. I'm <laughs> telling you. Yeah. No, they like it because everybody, they're using it and they're and it makes them feel. This is what my mom says. She's now, like, what's your aunt? I know what your dad's his back. Back. Your mom was like calm her down. Is that what anxious and so like that? She gets she she can have some anxiety. Yeah. And she's <clears throat> normally on. She'll take other you know anxiety things or whatever. Yeah. She's reduced them because of that. So she feels really good. She takes it at night. She sleeps really good. Uh, my other aunt, same reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they like the way they feel. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just calmer and everything. My, my mom's husband uh, just started. So he is a uh, 30, 35 year uh, recovering alcoholic. So 35 years he's been clean sober or more than that. Wow, that's no a drugs, no story. alcohol, no nothing, right? Hasn't had anything like that. Sounds boring. And he just retired. And like the very first thing that, and she, he's got lots of anxiety and, um, my mom had been telling him about the, the sleep product, the Ned stuff. And so he's first time in 30 years, he's touched anything. Right. So he, he couldn't even take, cause even that, like, I, by the way, people ask this on the time all the time is, uh, they, it will pick up some of, if you're regularly, uh, drug tested, it can pick up the THC. It's not likely, but it can. And so like, I know that Ned has if to It's a very, very sensitive test, right? Yeah. yeah. So, because it is legal in all 50 states. It's hemp. It's, yeah. it's got low enough THC. Yeah, it's totally legal. But if you have a, a job where they're super strict and you're using that on a regular basis, it could show up on a test. And right. so we normally tell people. So anyways, because of that, he has a, he's been wanting to try it forever, but he just retired like a month ago. And so now he's been, and he's been, it's been like, he likes it. Yeah. Cause the doctor had him on all kinds of other medications to help him sleep and bring his anxiety down. And he's been able to wing off that completely. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Nice. That's yeah, huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's big. That was I didn't even big, think about that until you told me. Sorry. That, that was one of the big uh, reasons why they fought um, just cannabis legalization to begin with. Mm-hmm. Was a lot of pharma companies. You know what it shows? It shows reduced opiate usage, uh, reduced usage of anxiety medications. So, of course, pharma companies are like, uh, we don't want you know these products to come out because we'll sell less products. We'll yeah. sell less of our medications. Of course. So that was one of the big, the big. Speaking of our our sponsors, you know these uh, these path water bottles, these these aluminum can bottles. Man, they are. I mean, I this morning I had one in my car. And they're because it's aluminum, it's aluminum, right? So it's fully recyclable, refillable. But when this thing is full, man, I could throw this through my window if I want. I this like the a taste nice little of safety. It. Yeah, the aluminum better mechanism. than <laughs> plastic because, you know, it's just like it. If it's cold enough with plastic, you can kind of get away with it. But like the, the aluminum keeps the flavor of it a lot better, too. It does. You yeah, know, it it's does. amazing. But, I mean, they're so hard. I have it in my car. And I'm like, man, if I Did you know to. that? We, so when we, I don't know if you guys were there. I think Doug was there. Did I think I remember him telling me that their goal is actually to start getting those little uh, refill stations all over. Yeah. So yeah. Is, is that They've the done plan? that at some schools, I believe. Is that right? Uh-huh. So, okay, that's why I thought that was they the They did that at my son's school. Oh, they have, he has a, re, what? Uh, yeah. No way. Yeah. So you they sell, take a picture of that. I want to see what they Yeah, so like. they sell path water there yeah. uh, in the bottles, and then they have refill stations. So it's like obviously better for the environment. Plus, aluminum is almost 100% recyclable. A lot of people don't realize this, but plastic bottles, they say recycle. But it's like ten like percent or not something. Not even, yeah. Yeah, you I remember him. I remember when we were first talking to him that they were saying that. I had no idea. Yeah. So aluminum's way, way better. And then of course these are reusable. So if you save the bottle, it's like you have a bottle that you can fill up all the time and not throw away so many. Because a lot of people don't realize that. Like that is a big problem. Mm-hmm. It, when, so I'm old enough to remember when yeah. bottled water we didn't was not have that. Yeah, nobody had bottled water. Yeah. Actually, if you had bottled water in your house, you were like super bougie. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did oh, they God. even have any? Yeah, Avion mm. or Perrier, you know, or whatever. That was it. So I, I do not even remember bottled water yeah. being sold. I remember you could get uh, Alhambra. I remember because Alhambra house. shipped in from. Fiji. Yeah, I, I do remember you could get Alhambra, but you oh know, yeah, that was what rich people did. Rich people had the Alhambra bottles. And then and that made its way into the offices, you know, so everybody yeah. meet around the water. We drink cooler. out of the hose. Doug, what is the water history? I feel like you should know this. <laughs> You've seen a lot in Sorry, your Sorry, I'm not really up to date on that. I mean, do that. you remember the evolution of that? Because, I mean, I remember drinking mm. out of a, a hose. Yep. A, yeah, a I did the same hose. thing, too, which yeah. I think is very unhealthy, especially when it's been sitting out in the hot sun. Oh, it yeah. tastes like plastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I remember when water started going coming in bottles, and I just thought, how ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, you're paying for water? Are you kidding me? It's free. Dude, this is- I we, could get myself a Diet Coke instead, yeah. you know? Yeah. We were talking about this because like, we never were allowed water at practice. This when we were like in the heat and all this, because like, no, you know, like you're being a pussy. Or it's like, dude, I just want water. <laughs> I'm like, I'm dying, over, right? It's oh, fine. And then, so what they did, which was like they they stuck a hose to like some PVC pipes and like yeah. poked holes into yep. it, and we're all like trying to fight each other <laughs> to like. Blah, 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 blah. That's like, how it was. Like, when get I was... some water, dude. Like we're animals. Is it not like that still? That's how it was for no, me. No, it's school, not too. like that, dude. Oh, they have their own up. little bot. Like, in high school, that used they like... literally the exact same thing. You just had a garden hose goes right into a thing that comes up. It's a wa- like a, we called it a water trough, right? And it, and it yeah. it's PVC pipe, and there's just I felt like cattle, water stream shoot out, and then the players just run up and, and just go up to it. And we had a time. We had like a short window. Yeah. Like you got like one minute. I'm like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> like you know, like well, trying to get as much twelve fifteen kids could get water at the same time like that way. That's exactly wow, how they dude. did it. Yeah. The world has changed. <laughs> it, was, it was fucked yeah, yeah. up. I thought dude. it was like that still. I had no idea. Now now oh. if you t- now if you raise your voice a little bit, no. that your mom's gonna come talk to you. Because you raise your, oh, you're, you're, my son the other day said that you kind of got loud oh, with him. We're mid game. Can I go to the bathroom, coach? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> go in your pants. <laughs> like a man. <laughs> Get back out there. <laughs> be a man. Yeah. How is that guy? Is he still growing the be a uh, man? Yeah, page? he's still going. I love that page. Oh, uh, that's, yeah. he, he came Bo- out of Boston nowhere. Boston, be a man. Yeah. He's done, he's doing like some stand up now, too, I believe. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Do you guys remember the, the pee troughs at bars? They don't, you don't see these anymore, do you? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like yeah. stadiums, dude. They still do. Oh, they still oh, do. Bro. It's a big tub. Can I just tell you and that's- everybody just pees in it. Such a formative part of like a boy, like a, a yes. boy's experience, right? So like girls did not have to <laughs> no. go through this. We would have to go with like, I don't know how many hundreds of dudes all at once, like, you know, all together. We, we have one break, you know, during like the seventh inning or something. And we're all in the bathroom together in this huge trough. There's no wall. So, there's, there's nothing, nothing in between. Stand- Everybody's standing next to some huge in six, guy in sixth grade camp that they had a a, a circular water trough like that. Oh I'll never God, forget how tra- how that? traumatized I was as a kid. <laughs> sixth grade, you're still nervous and shy about other people seeing your dick, right? Yeah. And you had to go from the shower, right, right. which was already like nerve wracking for a sixth grade kid. That's hanging your up. Your towel like this. Yeah, so yeah. You, you know you have well, you have to hang it up before you get to the shower, which means you do this and then you put your shampoo bottle, yeah. you know, hide your little winky. <laughs> <laughs> to go over to the shower, then you shower, and then in the in it's the like middle they had this year old man just like big, right next to this big round. Yeah, no, there's like a teacher in the corner timing us. We had three minutes, three minutes of shower. You know, oh, next uh, number five, get out, get out like that. So you come out, and then they had this big water a f- circular <laughs> pee drop. Yes, the worst thing so now you shoulder heard. to shoulder with some kid, and you got another kid across the way from you. It's like it was so embarrassing. And, and I don't like, even I can't remember make eye contact. I can't if they make eye did contact. that on purpose to like normalize all that shit at that age. But I remember I was terrified of that yeah well this is why this is how you learn no that to, was horrible idea. this is yeah. how you learn to to look down or look into space yeah. this somewhere, is what you learn somewhere else yeah because <laughs> get me out of this yeah <laughs> you create an alternate personality yeah how did you get split personality disorder <laughs> i had to pee in a fucking circular trough i had to yeah. i had to go somewhere else yeah. you know a lot of people can't even i had a buddy and when we were in high school he couldn't he couldn't pee in public at all if there was one of us around like he just couldn't do it like yeah. he'd have to go off and do his own thing that's where i found out like some people aren't Circumcised. <laughs> this thing. What is that? That's how I found out too. Yeah, I was like, "What's wrong yeah. with his dick?" It's like it just <laughs> there's things happening <laughs> elsewhere. Why does it look like that? You know, the percentage yeah. of that is dramatically gone way down. down. Yeah, you know, way that. down. When yeah. we were kids, what I think it was elephant trunk. Yeah, when we were kids, I think it was eighty to ninety percent of kids were circumcised. Were circumcised. Now it's like almost 50-50, right? It's, oh, it's around 50-50 or yeah, even less. I did not know that. I know that's crazy. I know. Yeah. 
Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Look, there's a lot of companies out there that sell supplements, nutrients, vitamins, minerals. Here's the problem. A lot of them, your body simply doesn't absorb. You have expensive pee. Well, there's a company called Live On that makes these products in extremely absorbable forms. I actually feel a difference using their products. Uh, I use their B-Complex. I like their glutathione. Your body actually absorbs this glutathione, so it raises glutathione in your body, making your immune system very strong. But they have other products as well. It's the only supplement company that we endorse in this way, okay? It's absorbable, tremendously slow. Go check them out. Head over to liveonlabs.com forward slash mind pump. Get any product of theirs and get a free sample pack of all six of their products. All right? Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from B. Madursky, 2009. What is the best way to get a flat stomach so I don't have to suck it in all the time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think of that commercial right away. What's the one where the, you guys remember that commercial? Where the, the guy sucks it in. Yeah, they the two it guys. Out. Yeah, they're at like, the pool and like a girl uh -huh. walks by. Like, and then they relax. <laughs> yeah. What was that? What was that commercial for? Was, you guys? I think it was a beer commercial, wasn't it? it no. Yeah. I feel like it was a yeah, beer commercial. It was like commercial. Bud Light or something. Yeah. All right. Uh, step one, be lean. Okay. Can't do anything yeah. about body fat around your belly. So obviously you got to be lean. Step one. Step two, here's one nobody ever considers. Uh, avoid foods that you may have intolerances to mm. because that will make your belly distend. Uh, it'll cause bloat. And so many people, I used to have so many clients that accepted this as a part of life that they didn't realize that this is not supposed to happen, right? You're yeah. not supposed to, after a meal, you're not supposed to sit back like, you know, and I thought this was normal too because my grandfather, my dad, everybody, right? They'd eat a yeah. big ass bowl of pasta, big bunch of bread with sauce, whatever. At the end of dinner, they're both yeah. sitting back, unbutton their jeans. Yeah. Oh. You got to take like two belt loops off. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, just... And my grandfather used to do this. He'd come over and be like, he'd hit the side of his belly and be like, look how hard it is. It's all muscle. <laughs> yeah. That's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to bloat like that. So you're probably eating something that you're intolerant to. So pay attention to the food you're eating. You should feel after you eat fine. You should not feel any bloat. And that makes a big, big difference. All right, now let's talk about exercises, right? The That's the part everybody's interested in. What exercises can I do? You can definitely train your abs and your obliques, but those muscles aren't really responsible for bringing in the midsection. In fact, when you suck in your midsection, the muscle that you're using is called the TVA, right? The transverse abdominus. This muscle is like a weight belt around your body. And simply doing what are called vacuum poses, which is similar to sucking in your stomach, except you're really bringing it in as hard as you can and squeezing for time, that'll strengthen the muscle that brings uh, everything in. And if you want to add resistance, not really many ways you could do it other than getting on all four so that gravity adds a little bit of resistance and gives you a little bit more tension when you pull it in. I want to I want to stress the the diet thing again because something that uh, I and I didn't know this until I got to a place where I was really really lean but to to notice this but I think there's a lot of people that eat foods that inflame them and retain water and they don't even realize it totally. because it's not bad enough to cause any like crazy symptoms where they have maybe diarrhea or they have stomach cramping or they see, but that's like one of the first things you see is just like bloat. Like you mm -hmm. get, you get a little bit of bloat or water retention going on. And sometimes it's just subtle enough that you don't really notice it except for that. Oh, I feel like I just can't ever see my abs or get lean enough. And so I would actually do like an elimination diet or assess some of the, cause I've seen that too, where I've taken a client figured out what the offender is and then get rid of it. And then that alone already makes their stomach flat all the time without even doing any ab work or getting any leaner, Totally, just simply assessing what foods they could be eating that could be causing the problem. Well, it's not like a humongous factor, but I have also noticed too, just how, people like hold themselves in posture when they're standing up. Uh, and I, I would always kind of talk to Courtney about this too, because she would get in that problem. Like, Oh, I just feel like so, you know, fat today or whatever, you know, and typically it was because like her posture was just like off and in her hips to in her, um, in the way that she had this, this excessive arch, uh, you know, really didn't, 
uh, put her in a position where it felt like, uh, you know, her stomach was flat and, and she was presenting herself well. And uh, once we started working on that and just like noticing that it was, you know, a lot different. And then on top of that, the bloat, yeah. it, both those things in combination really, you know, reduced that vis visual look of like, I feel like I'm like loose and flat. I actually flat think today. that's a, a great point and even more common than you're saying. Yeah, I, strong I, anterior tilt. Yeah, right? I have an anterior pelvic tilt that is exact. Even when I'm lean, I still kind of put push my stomach out because it's it's so excessive mm -hmm. and working on that flattens the stomach out because you think you, you you the hips rotate out like this it pushes the stomach forward. yeah pushes the stomach forward so even if you get lean you always kind of have the, the stomach kind of going out like this where by you getting the hips in the in the right position or neutral it kind of lines up the spine and makes you look the stomach look a lot flatter so mm -hmm. that actually is more common than i think you think and between that and maybe eating something. Because I imagine there's somebody who's asking this question isn't somebody who's 60 pounds overweight. I mean, because I think the answer they is. They know like, what that is. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think, that I think you're aware. Of, this is normally people who are like, man, Adam, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape, but I still have this kind of pooch going on right here and I can't ever seem to see my abs and a lot of times that's either the bloat like we're talking about or what you're saying Justin right now is the you know your hips and your your pelvic tilt that's caught pushing the stomach yeah, out. Yeah and this is like when people will fast for a day and be like oh my god my stomach's so flat and it's because they didn't eat the food that causes uh, the bloat. The right. most common foods that cause bloat in people and this isn't everybody it's just the most common ones right gluten containing foods mm -hmm. dairy is the other one and then some people do this just from lots of carbohydrates. Yeah. Gluten for me really does this Alcohol big time. Too, now, yeah. uh, and now here's a funny thing: uh, beer, right? People say, yeah. "Oh, beer belly." Beer is a gluten-containing alcohol. Yep. So you've got the alcohol plus the gluten. Yeah, it's a double whammy. And if you have an intolerance to gluten, uh, and you drink beer, you may notice you get this, you know, blow. Uh, another sign that this might be you is if you're somebody who sees such a drastic difference between uh, going to bed and then waking up in the morning. Yes. Right. So after that's all been digested and kind of gone through and stuff like that, inflammation comes down. You wake up and it's like whoa, like night and day difference. Your stomach's really flat mm -hmm. in the morning, but then after as soon as you start eating foods today, it's not like that anymore. If that's a really extreme difference, this is also another sign that this is probably what your your issue is related to diet more so than it is exercise or not quite being lean enough. All right. Next question is from Bravo Davis 90. How much of a factor is time under tension in relation to building muscle? Say I use the same weight, but were to do 10 fast reps or six slow reps for exactly the same time each set and for the same amount of sets. Which do you think would build more muscle? Yeah, so the difference is actually 0. 0.765. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being very specific. Yeah, so. no, you're, you're, um, uh, I, I swear to God, people uh, really split hairs on something like this. Um, so there's benefits to lifting fast. You tend to recruit more motor units and muscle fibers. There's also a uh, benefit to going slow, uh, time under tension, right? Uh, the control factor, uh, the, the, the safety factor. Most people I encourage to lift with a controlled slower tempo, mainly because the the risk of injury is so much lower and you get great benefit anyway. That's basically it. Lifting fast is fine. The problem with lifting fast is it requires a great deal of control. I, I, I save that for highly trained people with lots of control. Like I don't like to see fast squats unless you're like an excellent squatter. And most people just aren't. So everything's got to be slower and controlled. But there's value to both. And now what does that mean? That means uh, try a little bit of both, but always be careful because the faster you do the reps, the higher the risk of injury and the more control you have to have over. I mean, to give you a simple example, I could do a very slow, you know, I could mimic throwing a baseball very slowly and it's not going to hurt my shoulder. And I got to throw it real fast and I'll feel it in my shoulder. So same thing with lifting. In fact, there was that that recent study that showed that fast crunches, you know, activated more muscle oh, fibers than yes. slow crunches. But you know, uh, people just don't know how to crunch properly. So I would never encourage anybody to do a, a fast crunch unless they had like again the best control of all time. But this is where these studies really mess people up because yeah. they start focusing, they start putting too much uh, value on these types of things. When in reality, I mean, they all kind of have value. Do the one that works best for you. And also strongly consider the safety. Well, I definitely would say there's a priority to one versus the other in terms of like which you do first. Uh, mm -hmm. So 
I, I would definitely lean more towards the time under tension and the slow, methodical approach first to be able to understand what that connection feels like and to be able to like go through the recruitment process. Not to mention it's safer, uh, but uh, I mean, they both have value, but to, to be able to go there first and then um, get to fast is is crucial for you to be able to get success, you know, further down the road. You got to be tired of hearing me say this, but the answer is it's the one that you, you do the least. Yeah. If you want to know which one would build the most muscle in this case, because by the way, in a completely controlled environment, we did a study, if the load was the same. Time under tension is the time that the is uh, the same. It's just the reps are changing a little bit. It'd probably be a splitting hair difference yeah. of what Sal is saying. So it means nothing, right? But it, it, if you're just a, like normal people that are following some sort of a routine and you probably gravitate towards training one way more than the other, the one that's going to build the most muscle is the one you rarely do. If you were like my my athletes that I would train who do so much stuff explosively and do fast reps all the time mm -hmm. and they have like this one 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 the way they train and I get a hold of that person I'm doing a slow tempo four two two with them and we're going to do the thing same time that you would do 10 reps we're going to do six and slow it down and they're going to build the most muscle there opposed to me doing the the 10 reps and faster because their their body is adapted to that way of training mm -hmm. and the vice versa is true. So if you're somebody who trains like a bodybuilder, slow and control of time, and you never train like an athlete that's explosive and fast reps, you doing the fast reps is going to build you the most muscle. So that's, I think the, is the, is the theme of this, yeah. these but, types of questions. But the biggest yeah. factor that people need to consider is literally the, the benefit versus risk. Well, that's why Justin's point is perfect. Yes. Like if, if you had to, if I got a clean slate, right. And someone's asking this question, we've never trained at all. I'm always going to go slower control before we ever move well, into Well, think about explosive. it this way. Of all the people that you ever trained and worked with, what percentage of them did you ever encourage to lift explosively and fast, right? Very, very small. Very slim, yeah. The, 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 the chance of injury, the risk of injury goes up so much with speed of reps that it's almost not worth it for a lot of people, it, mainly because people don't have the control and the stability to do it. Most people don't have the control and the stability to do fast curls, let alone fast deadlifts, fast overhead presses, fast bench presses, fast squats. Yeah. So you got to consider that as well. So although definitely, you know, the one you're not doing is the one that's going to build the mo most muscle. What you don't want to do is I always train slow. I always train controlled. I've got good muscle development. I'm just going to switch into this explosive training. Okay. You, you think you have the control to do explosive training, but if you've never done it before, uh, I would go medium before going fast. Like, yeah. like work your way up because uh, it requires – it's a whole different that's skill. That's fair. I think that's yeah, a good point. A different operating system. Next question is from SL Ward 80 Is it overkill to take my resistance bands to work and do some small intermittent workouts during my downtime? Not only is you it mean not trigger overkill. sessions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. This was like a nice little softball. There's, they must not the be following sessions. the program. No, this, not only is this not overkill, this is one of the best things you could possibly do for your body. Yep. It will blow you away. I don't care what your workout is, by the way. So, so trigger sessions, uh, this is what they're kind of explaining what trigger sessions are, are found in MAPS Anabolic. But honestly, I don't care what program you follow. I don't care if you follow our programs, if you do your own program, if you follow an athletic program. Do this. Try it out. Watch what happens. It's literally like, imagine if all workouts were different cars throw a turbo on, what happens? They all get faster. So it doesn't matter what you do. Now, here's the key with this. These small intermittent band workouts need to be low intensity. What you don't want to do is have hard workouts all day long. You don't want to blow the motor. Yeah, you're gonna you're just going to overtrain. But if they're, if they're low to moderate intensity, you're going through just ranges of motion, you're getting a little bit of a pump, you're just moving, you'll notice faster recovery, better pumps, you'll get stronger faster, and you'll build muscle faster, and you'll burn body fat even faster. Even also, here's another benefit. It, let's imagine if none of that happened. Let's imagine all those amazing benefits I just listed didn't actually happen, although they do. Here's another benefit to doing this: you have energy all day long. Yeah. That that was something I didn't. Re, I I had no idea, but I noticed when I would do my trigger sessions throughout the day because I used to work so many hours. Right, I get to work at 8 a.m. Oftentimes, I would leave at 8 or 9 p.m. I had a small personal training studio, uh, and so I was just there all the time. And when I would do these trigger sessions throughout the day, so many times it would be like noon, like, oh my God, I do not feel like doing a trigger set. But I would yeah. do it and then I'd feel energized and I would feel productive and I'd think sharper and I'd have better, I'd do a better job as a trainer. So if you sit at a desk, man, I don't care if you have no exercise goals, 
do this and you'll perform better at your job as well. No, it's interesting because I was always trying to explain active recovery to clients. And so um, even myself personally, like in between really hard workouts, um, I would make sure to just move around. And I always thought like, you know, as long as I get in certain ranges of motion and I, and I move my body around, I can get better blood flow. Uh, and, and that's going to help sort of, you know, restore my body and provide me with, you know, more energy going into the next day, which is true and which was great. But now adding, you know, rubber bands into that too and mm -hmm. getting that kind of like, uh, like, you know, like low intensity contraction to really pump that blood into the muscles, like was a totally different experience. It did it like it charged it even more. Uh, and, and gave me, you know, an added bit of performance, even more so uh, going back to the workout. So it was very, very interesting. And it's one of those things it's, it's, we can talk about it to death, but until you actually do, you know, some of these like short workouts and, and you're very consistent with it, uh, you know, you're, you're going to see what that does. It's, if, it's amazing. If I want to get ripped fast trigger sessions, it's like nothing compares to trigger sessions for getting lean. Um, in a hurry. Bands are great because you can attach them at different angles. So you have like a huge variety of exercises. Yeah. And what I would do for it's me- It's not very damaging either. No, no, not at all. It's like I said, they facilitate recovery. What I would do is I would do one exercise per major muscle group. So I'd go rows, presses, overhead presses, curls, extensions, and then I'd do like uh, some lunges for my legs. And then that would be my workout. And it would be literally eight minutes long, max, kind of low intensity. Another way you could do it is you could just focus on two or three muscle groups that you need special emphasis on. So, oh, I want to bring up my hamstrings. I want to bring up my my back and my shoulders. Okay, so do a few rounds of, of just those uh, body parts. But personally, I advocate for whole body because I think there's a whole body signal that it sends. Um, and in my experience, that seems to be the most effective way to do them. I use three, 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 three rounds of a circuit. So yeah. I would do one exercise. So, you know, like you said, you know, chest flies, body weight squats, band, you know, lateral raises, rows. I bet I would do 15 to 20 reps, mm -hmm. no rest between each exercise. The only time I get rest is after I do the whole full body one time, give myself about a minute or something like that for the heart rate maybe yep, to come yep. down a little bit. And then I go through again. I do that two times, you're done. And you're done in that in eight minutes. Mm -hmm. It's so it's so quick. I think the only mistake I see with trigger sessions or applying this is we all have, we have a tendency to want to do more. Yeah, you want to make it a workout. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and my goal is actually not to sweat during this. It's like literally I want to get a little bit of a burn and a pump from it. That's it. That's it. And that I don't it should not be struggling to get each rep out. You should not be sweating from it. It does you do not need to make this super intense. You'd be far better off actually doing it a couple times a day than going really really hard yeah. at it. Next question is from ASPAR11610. Should I continue to use creatine when I'm off for eight weeks post-surgery? If so, what are the benefits? Yes, absolutely. Recovery you know, benefits. Right? Well, the studies are showing now that when, when a, a muscle is inactive, right? Okay, so when you don't move, muscles atrophy, so they shrink. Creatine actually dramatically reduces the amount of atrophy that happens. So they've actually done this. They've actually done studies on this where people will purposely become inactive or post-surgery, they'll give them creatine, and they lose less strength and less muscle. So it's muscle sparing. Muscle sparing, okay? But there's more benefits to creatine than just muscle. It's, I know that that's, a, that's usually what it's taken for. That's what it's sold for for the last you know few decades is to build muscle and recovery. Creatine boosts cognitive performance. It's good for the health of your mitochondria, which affects all of your cells. It has antioxidant Antioxid, properties. Yeah. It's good for your heart. Uh, it's just a health supplement. So th the thing about creatine is, no joke, and we'll see this in the next 10 years, mark my words, it will be something that is recommended to most people to take just for health, whether you work out or not. But especially for someone like this, if you're going to be post-surgery, you're going to atrophy, creatine will prevent some of that from happening. It's not going to prevent all of it, but it is going to reduce the amount of atrophy that happens uh, post-surgery. So this is something that, in fact, I, I think that they're going to recommend. I think physical therapists, if they're not already, are going to start recommending creatine as part of rehab or post-surgery because of these studies. And again, they're clear, and it's one of the most studied supplements that's out there. So it's not just my anecdote. There's lots and lots of literature to point to exactly what and I'm it's so about. cheap now too. It is like it's not that expensive. I I would tell somebody like not worry too much about off day of training and this and that. But 
why not? It's not that it's not that expensive to do it every single day, and because of all the stuff that keeps coming out with all the health benefits behind it, I, I would say take it every day. Absolutely. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a lot of free guides there that can help you build muscle, uh, burn body fat, move better, reduce pain. Lots of guides, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsalon. Adam is at mindpumpadam.